Hello and welcome to the Virtual Nature School. We're in session two of our inquiry around going on a journey. Today we're going to be looking at how people have left trails and signs for us to follow. We're going to work with ancient wisdom, people who've been able to leave little marks in the environment to give us a clue of where they were traveling. We're going to be exploring how we can use that inspiration to create our own trails, our own signs, to help people go on a bit of an adventure. Welcome to our second session where we're exploring about how we go on journeys. It's been amazing to look at the things that you've discovered. Everything from wild foods that you've been able to collect, to features in the landscape, things like bridges and waterfalls, along with the idea of balancing walking and being full of energy when we go outside. For some of us, we've packed our rucksacks for the first time, we've made a sandwich for the first time, and we've got ourselves organised. So well done, everybody. Now what we're doing is thinking a little bit more around how we can create a trail. And a trail is like a pathway. There are many trails and I, the idea of marking pathways in stories. You may have heard of Hansel and Gretel. And in Hansel and Gretel, they used breadcrumbs to leave a little trail. But it wasn't so clever because the birds came and ate all of the breadcrumbs. So let's have a look inside our talking tub and see if it will give us some ideas of things that we could do to mark our trail. Now in ancient civilizations and in ancient ways of being with the land, we've used rocks. So this is a bit like an Inushuk, which is a way marker from Canada. We make things called cairns up in the mountains, which are piles of rock. So we use things in the natural landscape to show where the pathway goes so that we don't get lost when we're in wild spaces. Some people have decided to use posts and they carve colours and they carve shapes into the posts. So you get a map and it tells you you're going to walk on the red path and all the way around your walk it's going to show you that you're in the right place. So we can use colour to help us find our way. Some people use symbols and so this is a signpost that tells us how far it is to get to the forest. So 4.8 kilometres and we're going to end up in a forest area with that symbol. We can use shapes and drawings onto our signposts that help us show what kind of pathway it is. Is it okay for a bike or is it one that's good for walking? Some people don't use words that you can read from letters, but they use something called Braille. And so we can use these different patterns to help us read messages just using our fingers. Some people use signposts and in signposts what we're doing is telling people what direction to go and we've said it's north or south and then we've given our walk a name. So this is called the Appalachian Trail which is actually in America. A simple arrow says do you want to go to the left or do you want to go to the right? So today is going to be thinking a little bit about direction, thinking about your left hand, your right hand straight ahead and backwards, turning around. So all of those words that we use, we're going to have to apply them in making our trail today. We can use something as simple as a stick. By putting two smaller sticks, we can make it into an arrow. And so taking us on a walk through the forest or along a pavement and not using anything but arrows will help us find our way. Sometimes people use things that are just not meant to be in the natural world. I can't imagine why you would nail a cowboy boot to a tree, but it's certainly something that's very obvious. You can see it very clearly. Perhaps their plan was to make it into a little special birdhouse for a little nesting bird. But it gives us a very clear sign, a very clear, obvious way to know where the pathway is. Other people, and many traditional owners of the land, use very subtle things, such as breaking a blade of grass, or putting a knot into a piece of grass, or making some sweet grass um, and braiding it together and hanging shapes into trees that are very subtle and you have to look very carefully to find them. 
One of the things that was mentioned was about something called What Three Words. And what somebody did was that they divided up the whole world into grids of three by three meters. They then gave them a unique three word address. And so the address for Oklo Nature Kindergarten is Delved Bookshop Profile. Now you're never going to see those words written on a map, but if you put them into the app called What Three Words, you'll find exactly where it is that we've been using to share out all the things around the virtual nature school. There are all sorts of possibilities for creating your own pathways, your own trails. It could be that you take us on a trail and just put the signs on the ground and lead us to a beautiful flower. It could be that you lead us to a gorgeous tree. It might be that you take us to a place where you've built a little den. However you decide to take your people that you're working with at the moment, it's going to be an amazing day. Good luck with your trails. How amazing it would it be if you were to go out and follow a trail that somebody else has made for you. Today's a day of having a go at thinking, where will you make your friends travel to? Will they go left? Will they go right? Will they go straight on? Will you turn them around? Where will you take them to on your adventure? I look forward to hearing all about where you go and what you do.